At the time of Gideon, Israel was living in a state of fear and desperation. The people had turned away from God, worshipping false idols like Baal, and because of this, they faced harsh consequences. For seven long years, the Midianites ravaged their land, taking their crops, stealing livestock, and leaving Israel in poverty and despair. The Israelites were forced to hide in caves and mountains, helpless as their enemies overran them. It was a time of spiritual darkness, as the people had forgotten the God who had once delivered them from Egypt. But even in their rebellion, God had not forgotten his people. He heard their cries for help and, in his mercy, chose an unlikely hero to lead their deliverance. Gideon, a simple farmer hiding from the enemy, Gideon seemed like the least qualified to save Israel. Yet, God saw potential in him, and through faith and obedience, Gideon would rise to become a mighty warrior for God. Join us as we explore this incredible story of how God can use the most unlikely of people to fulfill his plans. In times of weakness and fear, God's power shines brightest, and through Gideon, we see that even when we feel forgotten or unworthy, God is always ready to restore us when we turn back to him. Let us journey together through Gideon's story and discover how God's strength is made perfect in our weakness. In a time when Israel was oppressed by the Midianites, the people were filled with despair. Every year, the Midianites would invade their lands, stealing their crops, livestock, and destroying everything in their path. Israel was powerless, and the people cried out to the Lord for help. Among these people was a young man named Gideon, who, like everyone else, was terrified of the Midianites. Gideon was not a warrior, nor did he come from a powerful family. In fact, he was from the weakest clan of the tribe of Manasseh, and he considered himself the least important in his family. One day, while he was threshing wheat in a hidden winepress, trying to hide the grain from the Midianites, something extraordinary happened. As Gideon worked in secret, an angel of the Lord appeared under the shade of an oak tree nearby. The angel looked at him and called out, the Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Gideon, startled and confused, looked around, certain the angel had the wrong person. Mighty warrior, how can the Lord be with us when all these terrible things have happened to us? Where are his miracles? It feels like the Lord has abandoned us. But the angel didn't waver. Go in the strength you have and save Israel from the hand of Midian. I am sending you. Gideon's heart raced. Save Israel? Him? The least of the least? But how can I save Israel? He asked, doubt creeping into his voice. My clan is the weakest, and I am the least in my family. The angel's response was calm and certain. I will be with you, and you will strike down all the Midianites as if they were one man. Despite the angel's assurance, Gideon was still unsure. He needed a sign, something to prove that God was truly speaking to him. So, he asked the angel to wait while he prepared an offering. Gideon hurriedly prepared some meat, bread, and broth, and when he brought them to the angel, the angel touched the offering with the tip of his staff. Instantly, fire flared up from the rock, consuming the offering, and the angel vanished. Gideon was in awe. He realized he had just been in the presence of the Lord's messenger. Fear gripped him, but the Lord reassured him, saying, Peace, do not be afraid, you are not going to die. That very night, God gave Gideon his first task. He was to tear down his father's altar to the false god Baal and cut down the Asherah pole beside it. In its place, Gideon was to build an altar to the Lord. Gideon obeyed but because he was still afraid of his family and the townspeople. He did it under the cover of night with the help of a few servants. The next morning, when the people saw the altar of Baal destroyed, they were furious. Who did this? they demanded. When they found out it was Gideon, they wanted to kill him. But Gideon's father, Joash, stood up for him saying, 
If Baal is truly a god, let him defend himself when someone breaks down his altar. And so, Gideon was spared. Although God had spoken to him and delivered him from the people's wrath, Gideon still had doubts. He needed more reassurance that God was with him. So one night, he laid a fleece of wool on the ground and prayed, Lord, if you will save Israel by my hand as you have promised, let the fleece be wet with dew in the morning while the ground around it remains dry. The next morning, Gideon went to check the fleece. It was soaked with dew while the ground was completely dry. But even then, Gideon wasn't fully convinced. He asked God for one more sign. Please don't be angry with me, Lord, Gideon prayed. But this time, let the fleece remain dry and the ground be covered with dew. The next morning, God did exactly as Gideon had asked. The fleece was dry and the ground was wet with dew. Finally, Gideon believed that the Lord would deliver Israel through him. Filled with new confidence, Gideon gathered an army to fight the Midianites. He amassed a large force of 32,000 men, but God had other plans. The people with you are too many, God said. If I deliver Midian into their hands, Israel might boast that their own strength saved them. So God instructed Gideon to send home anyone who was afraid. When Gideon announced this, 22,000 men left and only 10,000 remained. But God wasn't done. There are still too many, he said. God told Gideon to take the men down to the water. There, he would sift them. Those who lapped water with their tongues like a dog would stay, while those who knelt down to drink would be sent home. After this test, only 300 men were left. God then said to Gideon, With these 300 men, I will save you and give the Midianites into your hands. That night, God knew Gideon still harbored some fear. So he told him, Go down to the camp of the Midianites and listen to what they are saying. You will be encouraged. Gideon, with his servant Pura, crept down to the edge of the Midianite camp, where they overheard two soldiers talking. I had a dream, one soldier said. A loaf of barley bread came tumbling into our camp. It struck a tent with such force that the tent overturned and collapsed. The other soldier responded, This can be nothing other than the sword of Gideon. God has given the Midianites and the whole camp into his hands. Upon hearing this, Gideon worshipped God. He rushed back to his camp, filled with faith and courage. Gideon divided his 300 men into three groups. He gave each man a trumpet and an empty jar with a torch hidden inside. When the signal was given, they were to break the jars, reveal the torches, blow the trumpets, and shout, for the Lord and for Gideon. In the dead of night, Gideon and his men surrounded the Midianite camp. At the appointed moment, they broke their jars, raised their torches high, and blew their trumpets. The Midianites awoke in a panic, thinking they were being attacked by a vast army. In their confusion, they turned on each other with their swords, and those who survived fled. The Lord had delivered Israel with only 300 men, without a single sword lifted in battle. After the victory, the people of Israel wanted to make Gideon their king. But Gideon refused. I will not rule over you, he said, nor will my son, the Lord, will rule over you. For the rest of Gideon's life, the land had peace. Though he was once filled with doubt, Gideon's faith and obedience to God made him one of Israel's greatest heroes. Yet after Gideon died, the people of Israel once again turned away from the Lord, forgetting the one who had delivered them from their enemies. <laughs>